Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I'm super excited to have you here. Um, we are on location at one of my favorite places on earth. I am so relaxed on vacation and I'm really excited to do this reading for you. If <clears throat> you are one of my regular viewers who regularly comments, likes, shares, subscribes, or um, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. I really deeply appreciate your support on my channel. And if you are new to my channel, um, this is not the usual setup, but I am very, very, very excited to have you here. Wow. All right, Pisces, I've asked Spirit to show us what you need to know and what you need to know right now. You have, um, sorry, this may be hard to, to see. Um, you have the five of wands showing up on the bottom of the deck and it says test of courage. And then you have the sun card showing up as your main energy right now. I really actually like this. Um, with the five of wands, you know, this fives are really changed through obstacle and the five of wands is really, really, really representative of that. It is you know, how do you respond when you face obstacle? How do you respond when something doesn't necessarily go your way? And for me, these energies, the the way the sun card is, it's giving me the vibe of, you know, someone who is facing obstacle, facing obstacle, facing obstacle, and then sort of transforms, sort of gains enlightenment, gains a sense of healing, gains a sense of this is why these things happen or this is why this happened. Um, and there is a complete sort of transformation. But when we're talking transformation in terms of the sun, we're talking in terms of really learning something from the experience of facing those obstacles. So I, I feel like you're coming out of a trying time. I, I feel like you're coming out of a time where things didn't really go too smoothly and you know, it wasn't like, um, just super straightforward. I think, you know, it requires perseverance to come through times like that. And it also requires kind of this energy of not letting things beat you or get you down to the point that you stop trying or that you stop bouncing back or that you start searching for. It, it's kind of like, you know, that phrase, when God closes a door, he opens a window or something like that. And it's like, it seems like some doors were closing or some things weren't necessarily working out. Um, but as long as you keep looking for the open window, you'll find it eventually and it feels like maybe you're finding that open window now or maybe you have and now you're starting to understand with the sun card why it happened the way that it did um but there is a tremendous sense of happiness and this sun card also kind of feels like a world card energy you see that um and so it kind of feels like this is the completion of the cycle and now it's like we can experience the other side of that blockage, the other side of that wall, why we had to go through that, the beauty that comes on the other side. You know, um, I was listening to Muji and Muji was talking about how, you know, basically that age old thing that like without shadow, light has no form, light has no purpose. Like if we were always just happy and everything always worked out, then what would be the point? Like we only understand things in terms of contrast. We only understand things in terms of, you know, um, happy because we've experienced sad. And so we know the absence of sadness and the presence of, you know, this buoyant feeling of joy um, is happiness, right? But if we didn't have sadness, that would be our only note. That would be our only experience. So we wouldn't have anything to compare it to. So contrast is important and sometimes experiencing something that we don't want to experience or that causes our suffering or that causes our misery or keeps us in a position where we keep feeling like we're hitting our head against a brick wall or where we feel like, um, you know, things just aren't working out for us. 
is important because then when something works out for us, we go, oh, I see why this is the thing that worked out. I see why this is the thing that I sort of had to wait for in order to kind of have this happiness. Now I'm ready for this or now, you know, um, it all kind of makes sense. So that's sort of the feeling that I'm getting around your energy right now. And we're going to dive in and take a look at some relationship energy okay first you're right away flipping is unexpected whoa all right on the bottom of the deck you guys have music music is an energy that keeps coming out for you which is no wonder with my pisces energy here Okay, you guys are getting social media and toxic relationship coming out together. You know, this can be just a toxic relationship with social media in general. I think, you know, social media is a pretty toxic space. It's really hard to do it in a very healthy way. It's hard to keep a healthy perspective. You know, most people that are doing social media, I, I hate making gross generalizations, but I think it's kind of safe here. You know, social media is a place where people are basically selling a lifestyle. They're trying to convince you that their lifestyle is so great or they're really literally trying to like kind of sell you a product or sell you an idea or something to aspire to, right? Um, but, you know, sometimes that takes us out of the energy of understanding that our life is pretty great the way that it is. Um, so it may just be something to say, stay off social media, or it may be something to say like, um, it could even be where someone who you had a sort of toxic relationship or with, or, you know, it says fighting codependent misunderstanding trigger. It, it, it could be where, you know, someone is spying on you. It could also be where maybe a misunderstanding that had something to do with social media, um, triggered an ending or, you know, caused someone to really lose their cool in a relationship or even, yeah, I feel like cause an ending or force an ending. Um, there is this energy of the grass is greener that says jealousy, bitter, um, option, unhappy, deserve better. You know, if someone is putting you in a third party situation and, or this, man, let me just sit with this for a second. I'm getting two things very strongly right here. One of the things is that you do have people who are actually envious of you or envious of your lifestyle. Um, I'm getting like evil eye energy, you know, which for me is protecting your energy, um, which is saying you can even say, you know, anyone who is sending me energy or, you know, putting their energy towards me right now, return to sender. Like, so if someone is sending you a lot of love, you're sending them love right back. If someone is sending you a lot of hate or a lot of jealousy or a lot of bitterness, you're sending it right back to them. You're not accepting it. You're not taking it. it it's something about protecting your energy here. I feel like there may be people who are envious or jealous of you. For others of you, I feel like this could be where someone is trying to convince you that they are somehow better off without you or that they are um, experiencing something. I, I, it feels fake. <laughs> it feels real, real, real fake. As it's like where someone wants you to believe that they, they may even be putting posts out there or maybe even like memes or something where it's like, it's like they want you to know that their life has gone on or that they're doing good or that they may even be with someone else. And it may even be where you can see straight through it and you just know it's a bunch of horse hockey. <laughs> um, this is interesting. This music card on the bottom of the deck, it's like... It's like telling me sort of, you know, stay in your own world, like s protect your energy, insulate what you're taking in on a daily basis. There is something really good coming for you here, Pisces. 
you are about to experience some kind of happiness um and there may be some kind of um ending that's happening or mm, it just feels like free radical energy it's like stuff that hasn't quite finished out or stuff that hasn't quite run its course or you know what i mean and it's like i i just feel like spirit is saying you know keep your eyes on your own mat <laughs> that's what we do in yoga we don't compare ourselves to anyone around us or outside of us and we we just don't even look you know we're just completely consumed with our own practice and that's how this feels that, that's exactly how this feels it's like just keep your like things are still happening things are still playing out the truth is still coming to light um it's always darkest kind of before the dawn or that it feels like there's some messy ugly stuff coming i don't think it is involving you like i don't think it but I do think it involves like your person or people around you. Um, it's like you may actually start to see where it's like people may have been friends, but they're really jealous and it may just start to really kind of show here. And I feel like if you just don't react, if you just don't respond and if you just return to sender, um, you can just make this through very peacefully, very smoothly without taking on any unnecessary burden, without taking on any unnecessary energy, really. Because uh, I feel like you're really moving in a positive direction. I see like the energy of like you're floating along, like you're doing okay. And it's like you may have some people kind of aimed at trying to take down your ship a little bit or, you know, make it a little bit harder for you to travel. I just think that's not your karma right now you you made it through your karma that was like that and it's just that's not for you that's other people trying to work out their own stuff that's other people trying to keep themselves afloat by sinking you and it, it just has nothing to do with you and it just feels like keep just keep focused on your own mat and then you have divine timing and travel and you know i feel like pisces you may be traveling or there may be some kind of opportunity to travel coming up there is um there is this energy it, it may even be where you're traveling and you may be posting pictures from your traveling and it may have where it may affect someone who felt that the grass was greener or who you know it, it just I, it keeps tying back to social media and it's kind of like if you just put your head down and you focus on yourself and you do your own thing and you post what you would normally post or you do what you would normally do um it feels like it's sort of a matter of time before it has some kind of effect either on someone or on some kind of situation here i'm not quite sure exactly what it is and then you have unexpected and this was actually the first card that came out so there is something unexpected and it feels great it feels like some kind of opportunity that's coming in some kind of like meeting someone that's happening here um it feels like there is something where it's like you're really taken aback you're you weren't expecting this um and i feel like this is something that is really positive and it's something where you don't want to be focused on something that has to work itself out, you know, um, when this thing comes along. And then you have a wedding. And I'm going to clarify this. Um, some of you could be traveling to go to a wedding, but I feel like there is a serious relationship coming in unexpected. Like you may, you like if I said to you, oh, you have a relationship coming in, your response would be, oh yeah, right, you know, or like where, I don't know where they're coming from unless they show up on my doorstep. Okay, so you guys have unexpected and wedding is clarified by dreams and baggage. And this is kind of giving me this idea, this, it's not an idea, but it's like an energy of like, you may have prophetic dreams or you may have this feeling that like you just have some idea that something is coming towards you. Um, 
It may even have to do with a past person. Like you may just feel with this baggage, it feels like it's something from the past. Hmm. It may even be where you're letting go of something from the past. Um, yeah, you guys have something new coming in. I feel like it could be a past person coming in in a new energy. But this feels very much like, you know, because the past is coming up in the form of baggage. This card with baggage on it. And this is sort of like, I feel like you're lightening your load intentionally, Pisces. Hi, Bob, or hi, honey. You guys see my grand dog? <laughs> you see her tail? Um, you may have some, it, it feels like, um, it feels like you're releasing things that are not in alignment with where you're going or where, what, what your dreams are. It feels like you're very firmly pointed forward. And anything that would kind of try to pull you back in a direction that isn't that, it feels like you're sort of rejecting it, letting it go, dropping it off, not dealing with it anymore. And you're really focused more forward on your dreams. And right as this transition sort of starts to really take hold with you, it feels like something unexpected happens. Okay, and it does really feel like this entire reading, I think I might even title this like trading heartbreak for happiness. Um, you have heartbreak and you have abundance. Can you even see these? I'm sorry. I really wanted you to be able to take in the beauty of this island. I, this place is like, has been my home away from home for a really long time. It's such a special place. Anyway, um, this this is clarifying that social media grouping of toxic relationships, social media, and the grass is greener. And it really, this is what it feels like, you know, when you have the five of wands with the sun card as your initial energy, right? It, it just, it feels like you're trading blockage for freedom, for happiness, like all this energy of things that were standing in your way. It feels like they were redirecting you on a path um, toward what is really meant for you. And it feels like even what is being revealed on social media or what is even being revealed in possibly a toxic relationship or even the way something is working out or the truth that is going to come to light about some potential relationships or whatever. Um, I do really get the sense of, you know, someone may have chosen someone else instead of you, Pisces, or like, it does feel like a triangle energy. Um, but I, I can't quite read it. It just sort of feels like there's some kind of triangulation. And it may be where someone was trying to convince you that they were super happy involved in something else. Um, but it, it feels like that is a lie. And it feels like that is coming to the light. And I don't think that that's where your abundance lies. I think your abundance lies on just strictly focusing on your dreams and letting everything around you sort of play out without getting involved in it. That's what I feel. You have this Sparks card, which this really gives me that you're meeting someone new. Where it's like, whoa, I wasn't expecting to meet someone that sort of like made me feel the butterflies or made me feel like this is sort of exciting. This could be some kind of new beginning. Yeah, underneath it, you guys, is passion. Okay, let me see what this divine timing and travel is all about. Yeah, on the bottom of the deck, you actually have celebrate. Um, this is giving me three of cups vibes and you do a boundaries underneath that. So it does feel as if this may be, you know, if there is an energy coming towards you that there had to have been or is now some kind of energy of, um, that's so funny. You guys just saw me, um, of, of you know, you have to let go of this in order to have this, right? Um, so you guys have secrets and long distance clarifying divine timing and travel. So long distance and travel, okay, that definitely is something that makes me feel there is some, 
there could be some kind of physical different distance between you and this person, but there could also be like how it's coming across to me is time, like like a great amount of time between you and this person. You know, it may be that like literally for some of you, you go traveling, you post something on social media, it causes someone to reach out to you. Maybe they're in the same place. Maybe um, it's like they just have something to say. Maybe it sparks some kind of feeling within them and they're like, I really want to reach out to Pisces, like blah, blah, blah. Um, but it feels a lot like there is space of some nature. Either it is a physical distance, either it is a time distance, um, a, an emotional distance, a we have not been on the same page for a while distance. It feels like something is closing. I actually feel like there could be two people here, something new and something old. The divine timing is clarified by that secrets card and that is telling me that like something is going to be revealed in divine timing. And I think that there are, there's like multiple facets of what is being revealed to you. I think some things that are being revealed to you are like just how toxic certain relationships are that it may not even be between you and somebody, but may even be like your person with somebody or like could be a group of friends, could be a group of coworkers, could be something like that. And it's kind of like, I just keep getting every time I get near this energy, just stay away from it, Pisces. It really, you don't have to get involved in it. Honestly, it's just like, all you have to do is stay focused forward and not worry about it and not get distracted by it. No, guys, stop. Come on. Oh, bunch Oh, wow. I just split the deck and the Ace of Swords showed up. Clarity is coming in. Sun card, Ace of Swords. Um, there's, you're going to get some kind of information here and you may even have some kind of meeting or some kind of big conversation or big talk, um, that's coming in here that, uh, let's see. Hey girl. Hey girl. Yeah. Go lay down. I love you, but you gotta go lay down. I can't play right now. Let's see. King of Wands, Nine of Cups. This could involve a fire sign. Yeah, we got the six of wands on the bottom of the deck. Um, that's a card of Leo. Plus then you have the king of wands. This may be some of you were dealing with a fire sign who was sort of selfish at some point or their behavior was very selfish. They may have only been concerned about what they wanted. Um, they may have also... You know, sometimes when you see the King of Wands and the Six of Wands and the Nine of Cups, it sort of is that energy of someone who they need a lot of attention to sort of be okay, to feel okay about themselves, um, you know, to feel content, to feel happy. Like they're not someone who can just get attention from one source and that be enough or that be um, satisfying. Like, how do I want to say it? You know, it's like, some people get in a relationship in a committed relationship and it's like it, as long as that relationship is you know fostering and growing and being nurtured and and you know they can get uh you know that that sense of emotional contentment that they feel with that other person is better than like the attention of a huge crowd right um and so other people it's like they can't handle the intensity of that and so they need to get attention from like all these different places and they don't want it to ever get too deep. They just sort of, it is almost like an energy of like, I just want you to look at my social media and be jealous of me or want my life or think that I sort of have it all or think that I'm like really cool. You know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of immature. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nine of Wands on the bottom of the deck with 
the lovers and the seven of cups in reverse with the ace of pentacles can you see that i don't know i'm sorry guys um I just wanted y'all to feel like you were on vacation with me. Um, this is an energy of someone who's making a choice to leave behind options. There's, with the nine of wands, this is sort of an energy of like, there's just something I can't let go of. There's something that no matter what I do, no matter, you know, who I meet or what, um, it's even like, there's just this energy of like, there's only one place I go to really fantasize. There's only one dream I have that really matters to me or that really does it for me. Um, and I can't let go of it. It just persists, you know, with the nine of wands. And, you know, it's like, but the choice requires investment. The choice requires actually physically showing up and offering something solid and stable. And, you know, this is someone who has been operating in an energy of, you know, only caring about what they want and only wanting their own emotional contentment. And, you know, there are, there are plenty of people that will give you, that will humor you or that will give you that kind of energy. But it feels like this person wants someone who isn't willing to participate in that space and does require more of a commitment or more of a strong off, they, like they require something in return and why not? Like if you're giving someone something, why wouldn't you require something in return? But it just, it feels like, you know, this is someone who may have really played out a lot of their options or may, you know, it's like there is only one fantasy, like the other fantasies just don't do it. The other dreams just don't do it. The other visions just don't do it. And with the lovers, it's kind of like, this is sort of a soulmate relationship, or this is like something that I feel like a strong choice that this person would have to make. But it's almost like the choice has made it for them. You have two nines here, the nine of cups and the nine of wands. And this is symbolic of someone who's really closing out a cycle. And um, it is an energy of someone who it's just like, no matter what I do, I just can't let this go. Yeah, it's and you have the tower underneath that. And underneath that, you have the king of swords. So this is definitely something that this person is really becoming strongly aware of and is really thinking about a lot. Um, and they may even be planning some kind of conversation about it. Okay, we have the devil on the bottom of the deck. So this is um, the factors affecting it. Okay, 10 of cups in reverse and the four of wands upright. Okay, is what this is what's affecting this connection. So the 10 of cups in reverse, this could be someone who's married, who has to get unmarried, has to get divorced, or they could have a significant relationship, could be living with someone. It can also signify the fact that this person just has never seen emotional contentment between two people work out. They may have a fundamental belief that it just isn't possible. Um, this may come from their foundation, right? With the four of wands. With the devil on the bottom of the deck. You have the 10 of swords underneath it with the knight of pentacles. You know, this is someone whose thoughts kind of keep them stuck. They are, they're someone who, they may be very self-critical. Like, I just can't, I'm just not someone, they may have been divorced or they may have had a relationship that didn't work out and they may tell themselves over and over again, I'm just not someone that can do that. I'm just not someone who can do that type of commitment or can do that kind of relationship. And, um, and it's kind of like, it's almost like the devil energy is like their desire to avoid another difficult ending or another thing that doesn't work out in their life. You know what I'm saying? And so the devil are those things that keep us stuck or that almost even sometimes can keep us from our own happiness. Those thoughts that we're telling ourselves, those, 
you know, those experiences from our past that kind of keep us from being able to free ourselves to try again. You know, it's like it was so bad that I, it just made me never want to try again. It hurt so much and it lasted so long and it was so difficult. I mean, the Ten of Swords is a very, very, very difficult energy. It's very hard. The, yeah, but you have those two nines and now I'm seeing these two tens very strongly. And this is, this is a cycle that's coming to an end. And it's a cycle of someone being stuck, someone being their own worst enemy, someone allowing a way of thinking to, uh, for, or an experience from their past or uh, some kind of belief system within themselves that like, they're just no good at relationships. And that's been driving them to be in this King of Wands, Knight of Cups energy of just, so I only care about myself. I only care about what I want when I want it. I don't allow myself to care about other people because all that does is get you hurt. Um, I'm just not, either I'm not good at picking people or I'm not good at relationships or relationships just don't work. It's something like that, I feel. With the Four of Wands, it does feel like um, whatever this relationship is, it gets to the, pl it got to the place or it, 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 it definitely felt like it was going to get to the place at some point where it was like, I'm going to have to commit. I'm going to have to do something I don't want to do. And so it's just going to be even harder at that point. So maybe I should just do it now kind of energy. It's like, I'm going to have to commit. I'm going to have to, you know, uh, you know, the four of wands can be marriage, you know, I'm going to have to hold up my end of the bargain or I'm going to have to be responsible for this. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. So in order to avoid it, I stay stuck. Huh, okay. So what is this person thinking about Pisces? What is in this person's thoughts about Pisces? Mm, yeah, they keep thinking about what your expectations of this relationship are gonna be. Why? Because can you see that Pisces? They consider you to be the empress. They consider you to be, and, and you see when you're in this energy where you don't think things are going to work out and you believe that trying to experience emotional contentment with another person leads to suffering, leads to difficult endings, and then you're dealing with a, an empress, it makes it even more difficult for you to really commit, right? Because what you're thinking is, you know, this person's unreplaceable. It's not like I can just go on and, um, and, and find someone else. Like when you're dealing with the Empress, the, it's like, I'll never find another person like this. Or, you know, if I mess this up or if I go through this, this may be the one that gets me. This may be the one that is too difficult to lose. This may be the one that I can't get over if I let them in. Oh, yeah. Okay, so then you have the Six of Pentacles, the Queen of Swords, and the Page of Pentacles. And this energy is like, you know, they know that they have to give equally to the situation, that they're going to have to give to you or to this relationship as much as you give to it. Um, and they may also know that they haven't been. They may have also known that they were misleading you about whether or not they were going to or whether they were or what. Um, with the Six of Pentacles, sometimes this can be breadcrumbing or giving to multiple people. And um, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because the next card is the Queen of Swords. And that's very much, I feel like, how they're seeing you, Pisces. Like, you may be mad or you may have expectations or you may want to have a strong conversation that, you know, doesn't feel good for them, doesn't look good for them, you know, um, that, that they let you down or that they didn't show up or that they gave to too many people or that they triangulated you or... You know what I mean? Or that they kind of strung you along and you may want some answers about that. Um, with the Page of Pentacles here, this could be where they see that you have learned a spiritual lesson or that they have learned a spiritual lesson or that both of you have learned some kind of spiritual lesson from this experience. But it also is telling me that this is why they know they're going to be required to give something 
authentic, something material, some, they are going to have to show up. They're going to have to invest something in this situation that is substantial in order to win your favor because they know you're not falling for talk with the queen of swords. It's like, you can see straight through it and you may have a few things of your own to say to them. So let's look at how they feel about you right now. You have the hangman on the bottom of the deck. You have the seven of swords in reverse with the three of cups and you have judgment. And you know, this is one of those crappy feelings, right? This is when hindsight is 2020. This is when, you know, with the hangman there, it's like, I'm looking back on the past. I'm seeing how I was misaligned. I'm seeing how I betrayed this connection with the three of cups here. For some of you, there was some kind of triangulation. I keep seeing that. Um, and it's kind of like they may have bailed or they may have never shown up or everything that they said may have really been a lie because they weren't ever really following through on it. And, you know, when you come to the place where you realize you can't really let someone go and you still have feelings for them and you keep coming back to it and it was never maybe your intention to have those feelings, but damn, you're kind of stuck with it. And, you know you you're looking back and you're looking at how you treated them and you didn't treat them very good and it was your fault uh, like I don't like blame so I don't like saying things like it was your fault and that's really sort of a a lazy way to say this what I really mean is you didn't show up you may have left without a proper explanation you may have made a lot of promises and then bolted before ever making any of those promises come true with the Three of Cups, you may have triangulated someone. You may have been more concerned about yourself and having a good time. It may have been like you showed up for the good times, but anytime anything went in any direction other than that, anytime it wasn't easy, anytime it wasn't about just having a good time, they may have bolted. Um, that's a hard thing. That's a hard thing to, to have to to own up to is your own behavior. That's the hardest thing. Um, you know, if someone could come back and be like, you know, I gave it all I had, but, you know, but it, that's not the case here. The case here is that, you know, I allowed myself to become distracted. I was probably avoiding dealing with myself or my own issues. I really, you know, even coming into this relationship, despite everything that I said, my fundamental belief is that, you know, emotional contentment shared between two people doesn't work. Or I was so damaged from a past relationship that it was never my intention to really get into a serious other relationship. And I may have misled you because at times when I was with you, I really thought maybe I want that. Um, but then when I would think about it, I would be like, no, these things don't work out. These things only lead to pain. And because I thought so highly of you or because I thought, you know, I felt you were an empress, you were someone that was irreplaceable, someone that, you know, if you walked out on me or if it ended or it didn't work, I would forever be like, wow, Pisces was the one who got away. And I just didn't want to take that on as an, as a chance, as a risk, as anything. Um, and so I really never owned up to my side of the equation. I never really showed up for this. I never gave you a proper explanation. Um, I may have even kept you dangling out there thinking that it could work out or thinking that I was changing or thinking that, you know what I mean? And this person has a lot of heavy feelings around this. This person is feeling all of this stuff of like, I did this, I did this, I did this, you know what I mean? And it's like, you know, when you really wake up and realize that you've hurt the one you love the most, or you hurt the one that you can't let go of, you know, you may have, um, um, even chosen other people who you didn't really have feelings for over this person. You may have even used those people to hurt this person. There's just a lot of energy right here. And, and I feel like this person, it's like with the judgment here, 
you know, if they're looking back on their own behavior, they're probably judging themselves a little bit, but they're probably also realizing and recognizing that like, you have every right to judge them. And now with judgment here, they want another chance. They want a reconciliation. They want to bring this back from the dead. And, you know, they're kind of looking at their chances and they're feeling a lot of feelings about it. And they have no one to blame but themselves. And that's the hardest seat in the house. That's the most difficult position to really be in. So, but you're definitely in their heart space. Let's see what actions is this person going to take. This is someone with a guilty conscience. I will just say that they've definitely done some things that they feel bad about. And it could be a lot of different things. They may have even like tried to use social media to make you feel upset or jealous. Um, yeah, here's their actions on the bottom of the deck. Of course, you got that nine of swords because darn, you know, Pisces, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't blame them for their own freaking wishy-washy behavior with the, this two of coins. They've gone back and forth, back and forth. And it's like, what are they going to choose? Wow. Look at this energy. We saw this once before in the deck. Um, you have the king of swords, the tower, the nine of wands and the full card. So this is a pretty explosive energy. I am going to clarify this tower. Um, but, you know, with the tower and the king of swords, this is someone who's seeing things very clearly. And there's somebody who's, how do I want to say it? It, it? This is a very abrupt understanding. It's like it all becomes clear in one moment. And you kind of have to face the truth you have to face your own actions but with the nine of swords this is an energy of mastering the thought and so with the nine of swords there on the bottom of the deck it's kind of like i have to overcome my own fear whether or not i'm able to make any progress with pisces um i have to overcome my fear i have to overcome this way of thinking that's causing this instability and causing me to like blow things up in my life blow things up in my life that actually really matter to me yeah so the for a oh, while wow. holy crap the um oh i love tarot so the tower is being clarified by the four of swords and the queen of pentacles with the page of pentacles on the bottom of the deck so this is saying you know this person their their mind is becoming clear they're healing and they're realizing you know i i i met i this mattered to me and that's sort of why i sabotaged it or um you know this is someone that i could potentially see myself committing to for the long haul and if i'm ever going to have a chance at having anything like that, I have to heal. I have to clear my mind of these fears and of these things that cause me to choose fear instead of this opportunity that I value. With the Page of Pentacles, this is a major spiritual lesson in this person's life. With the Nine of Wands and the Fool card, it's this energy of, you know, Pisces is this, this person that I can't let go of. I it's like no matter what I do, I still keep coming back to this desire, to this, you know, I keep holding on to this is, but this is what I really want. And I don't seem to be able to free myself from it. It persists. This desire that I have keeps persisting. And with that full card, and we're talking about what is this person potentially going to do? What potential actions are they going to take? It is like, okay, I'm going to try to let go of the past. I'm going to try to let go of maybe this, this kind of like scarred energy of, you know, my past relationships or, um, yeah, I mean, I, I do feel like that's what it is. It's kind of, you know, this belief that I can't, I'm just not, I'm not good at relationships. I can't have relationships or relationships don't work or whatever it is. I'm going to let that go. I'm, I'm going to put those burdens down and I'm going to just try to free myself to be able to take this chance or to go for it in this case. Bubba. Bhakti. All right, let me get you some messages, Pisces.
If you are dealing with a water sign, you have pressure. I have so much going on in my life and I'm struggling to juggle it all at once. And then you have... I should have, I could have, I would have. And then if you're dealing with, that's if you're dealing with the water sign. If you're dealing with the fire sign, whoa, geez louise. You have hurting you was never my intention, but now it's hurting me too. I definitely see that. I need you. The damage has been done and I don't know how to pick the pieces up. Well, we definitely got that energy. This isn't about you. I'm working through a personal issue. That's very clear. Um, I want this so badly, but I'm afraid of getting hurt. So I self-sabotage. That was the crux of the reading. And then you have, I know the clock is ticking for us. Won't you wait for me? So this person definitely feels like they're running out of time to do right or to show up correctly for this connection. Um, if you are dealing with an earth sign, you have, my life is falling apart and I'm struggling and something or someone is standing in between us right now that triangulation energy for sure um if you are dealing with an air sign i'm trying to make a very difficult decision and it involves you and you are the one the only one the empress yeah all right pisces this is what i have from you from this beautiful floridian island I miss you guys. I hope this helps. I hope this brought you some peace and clarity. Um, and gosh, guys, I am sending you such good vibes, such peace, such calm, such love, such, such sunshine. I hope you're getting it. Until next time, guys, all my best. Always, always. Bye-bye.